Welcome to the first episode of Rob's Sports Center. And by this being the first episode, you know, the first episode, I got, I got, I got, I ain't gonna say go out, I gotta come in with a bang. So in today's first episode of Rob's Sports Center, I'm gonna be breaking down my team, NFL wise, the New Orleans Saints. If you're a Saints fan, you're on the right track, right? Because us as Saints fans, we need to call a meeting and we need to figure out exactly what's going on so we can try to communicate to the office, the head office down there in New Orleans and try to get this stuff rectified before our season is completely blown. All right, so I ain't gonna even waste time. We just gonna get straight to the video. So if you can see right here in my tablet, I got a whole bunch of notes. So I would say, one of the biggest things I would say that I've kind of noticed about the Saints within the first, what was it, uh, four, yeah, first four games is that, from, to me personally, I don't know, y'all, they might, some of y'all might be different. You know what I mean? So make sure y'all let y'all, make sure y'all, you know, voice y'all frustrations or things that y'all might see that I don't see or things that I'm not picking up in the comments. But for me, it's, the, it's just the spirit, man. It's like, it's, it's like, a, it's like, I'm not seeing nobody who, who wants it. You see what I'm saying? Like, I would say that one of the, the one of the biggest people we have that as far as spirit that's always up and going that's ready to rock and roll is Shahid. Like, if you look at almost every return, if he get maybe 10 yards, 15 yards or whatever, it's like he get up and he just, cause he know, cause he, he you know, he, I get, he just holds himself to a high standard and he know that he got to execute in order for us to pull off these games. Because if you look at, like I say, we're gonna go down to the notes. So week one, we win 16 to 15. In my opinion, a big part of why we won was the defense, obviously, but also you got to think into consideration, well, this do count as the under the defense technically, but Ryan Tannehill threw three interceptions. Right. I, I'm not going to sit there and say that I don't think Ryan Tannehill is a good quarterback. I think that Ryan Tannehill is a good quarterback. He's human. Everybody's prone to making mistakes. But I think that those three interceptions, in a sense, kind of contributed because it's like, all right, if you look at our team in the whole, you look at the defense. Defense, I'm pretty sure, is ranked top 10 in points allowed, probably type top 10 in um, pass defense, top 10, 15, maybe in run defense. So the defense, in my opinion, they don't need to get a, a whole lot of the blame because, like, it's 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 the thing that me and um well me and this other guy, one of my own guys I work with, we always are having you know conversations, and it's like it's like this, right? So it's only gonna be so, especially in the NFL, it's only gonna be so long that you can stop some of these teams from scoring, man. It's like if you got a good defense, okay, but at the same time, you don't want to put your defense in a lose lose situation to the point to where it's like, okay, the offense come on the field and we going three and out. We go out there, three players, we right back off the field. We right off the field. Now the defense, they just came off the field, almost can't even take their helmets off. Because by the time they take their helmets off and take a sip of water, defense back on the field, special team, they punt, we punt the ball off. So we're not really giving them that type of leverage as far as, you know, giving them the contribution for the work that they're doing. Because if you look at, we haven't allowed over, well, this game, this Bucks games was the most that we've had scored on us this year, which is 26. And, you know, obviously division rivals are always going to be a lot tougher just because you play them twice a year. So y'all all pretty much familiar with each other and all types of schemes and things of that nature, you know. And my thing is this. So if you look at what I analyze about watching the Saints, it's like I think that and I'm going to be honest with you because I'm a strict, we, you know, as a Saints fan, the last 15 years, we come from Drew Brees era. So we already knew one thing. When we had Drew Brees, we always had a shot at the playoffs, regardless of how garbage the defense is. Like, if you take our defense now and put that back with the offense we had when Brees was playing, hey, that's a whole other New England situation. Like, for real. I really believe that strongly because – Breeze does not get as enough credit as he deserved, in my opinion. Me and my buddy will always say the same, but he does not get enough um, credit, in my opinion. But, like, back to what I was saying, though, if it's like, so once you lose, once you go from that Breeze, and a lot of times, nine times a ten, it's kind of having to go down because there's not a lot of quarterbacks that can compare to Breeze or that's ever going to amount to Breeze. It's not a lot of them. So, with the whole situation we had a couple of years ago with Teddy Bridgewater, you know, Trevor Simeon, Jameis Winston, whatever the case may be, we got Derek Carr. Derek Carr, in my opinion, is the best quarterback we have had since Drew Brees. So I have, I'm having to look a little deeper into it. So I say to myself, okay, is it Derek Carr's fault? 
Now, this past game, they got the bull crap and talking about some the injury and stuff like that. Like, I'm a firm believer in if you can play through the pain, play through the pain. But if it's to the point to where you really feel that your injury is hindering your performance in a big way, you're not going to be a contribution to your team. So if you really feel that way, and he didn't make those excuses, but I was hearing the commentators, and I'm assuming some other people probably are going to make those excuse, those excuses, but I'm pretty sure even with Derek Carr, he wouldn't even use that as an excuse that his arm was, you know, in pain. We're not saying that you're in pain, but you can't use that as a crutch just because we're not able to put up any points. But back to what I was saying. So at first I started to jump on Derek Carr case, quarterback-wise. Then I got to think, you know what? A lot of times, it's not just as simple as a lot of us would like. To, a lot of us would like to think that it's just Derek Carr fault, but you got to think about it. Who's calling the plays? Pete Carmichael. Dennis Allen is the head coach. Dennis, that doesn't mean Dennis Allen necessarily calling up on um, calling all the plays. Like the thing about being an NFL coach, it's a lot of things in a sense you kind of can't control. You know, maybe maybe because you over so much, and maybe just because the flow of the game, from you know high school to college, from college to NFL, man, it's. It's, it's real, it's a really fast paced game. So it's hard to kind of be involved in everything. That's why you got to make sure you got the people that you believe and trust in these positions to take care of the things that, that needs to be taken care of. So it's the play call. So I would say that um, from a lot of games I've watched, well, from all the games I've watched, that Derek Carr has not had a lot of time in the pocket at all, you know? So, and that's not saying that, and, and I don't believe, uh, Buccaneers different. You know, Buccaneers, we already know what the Buccaneers have, front four linebacker. We already understand it. But we're looking at the Panthers. We're looking at the Packers. We're looking at the Titans. And not no disrespect to any of them, but do they really have that type of D-line to the point to where we can't score no more than 20 points? Like, I'm just trying to see because it then, it then it's like, you got to dive deeper into the situation, right? So you look, we're going to go, we're going to go to week one. See, I told you I couldn't prepare. We're going to go to week one. Derek Carr went 23 for 33 for 305 yards. One touchdown, one pick. That's cool. I, I could work with that, okay? I could work with it. So then we go to week two. He goes 21 for 36, 228 yards, zero touchdowns, and one interception. That one right there kind of got me scratching my head a little bit. So then we jump to week three. Keep in mind, week three, yeah, when he went out week three. I think it might have been the fourth quarter he went out. So he goes out week three. When he went out, he went out, he uh, went out with 13 of 18 pass attempts, 103 yards, one TD, one pick. And then they bring Jameis Winston in, who Jameis gonna have to be a whole nother conversation. Because if this, if 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 this, if 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 this all the Saints fans are gonna be watching this video. We will save Jameis because I gotta have I gotta get some understanding on that situation right there. So we go we gonna put him to the side right now and focus on what the situation is now. So then we go to week four, fast forward. So you know it was um that it was speculated that he wasn't gonna be playing due to injury week four. Confirmed he ended up playing. He goes twenty three for thirty seven, one hundred and twenty seven yards, zero touchdowns, one interception. So. He didn't do more interceptions than he didn't do touchdowns on the year, right? But let me give y'all this one right here. Michael Thomas. This is season stats as of right now. Through four games. Michael Thomas, 22 receptions. Yards, 219. Touchdowns. Chris Olave, 23 receptions. Yards, 306 yards. Touchdowns. So I say that, I say all of that to say this. I don't want to drag this video on too, too, too long, you know, but I say all that to say this. I think that the play calling for one is kind of, is it, 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 lackadaisical right now. I don't know if it's the, are they, are they play calling because they don't really understand what they got or are they play calling because they don't fully trust Derek Carr or he hasn't really adapted to our system. I don't know exactly what it is, but we're just not having success with play calling, period. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we just got Kamara back last game, right? It was un. It, it was un. It's almost. I'm not gonna say it's a. It's it's a um impossible um task for us to believe that he's gonna come back and just pick right where he left off. It's not impossible at the same time. It's like the man had been suspended for you know three games. You know what I mean? So it's like having to get back adjusted to that game time pace, and then you come you reinsert into an offense that's already struggling. I mean it. it, it you know, like in my mind, I thought us having. And then like I said, we lost Jamal Williams too. Um, I don't know how long he's gonna be going. I think they put him on IR. So if he's gonna be on, go, if he's on IR, he's probably gonna be going for a little while. So we gotta kind of prepare for life without him because it's here on us, right? But um, it, it's it's like 
I thought that it was going to open up a lot because now you have more to focus on. Like at first, we really, we really didn't have no run game or no running back. So the two, the type of running backs that Jamal Williams is, and I think the other running back was the captain TC. I don't really know too much about him, but I would say majority of what I seen from Jamal Williams last year was not the type of Alvin Kamara back, you know, like a receiver running back hybrid. That wasn't necessarily Jamal Williams type of game. So that was a big chunk of our offense right there going. So then you got Michael Thomas and, Hate him or love him. You got to be realistic once again. Michael Thomas hasn't played consistently probably since, what, 2019, 2020? So to think that he's going to be able to jump back into it and be where he was at one point, it's just un it's unreasonable. Then you got to think about it at the same time with, with Thomas and Breeze. They had a, a bond, a connection that had been formed over years of playing with each other, like two or three years of playing with each other. Derek Carr and Michael Thomas is their first time. Chris Olave and Michael Thomas is their first time. They haven't really been able to, to form that type of connection with any quarterback just because we haven't had a consistent quarterback presence. Once again, if you need you Saints fans say anything about Jameis Winston, I'm, I will be making that video probably next. Like, yeah, because we that's a conversation that's neat. But we haven't really had no consistent quarterback, you know, since Breeze. So it's, it's kind of been hard to bring that, that connection. And then now you got a lot of people kind of figuring, saying to them, saying to ourselves, Saints fans wise, that we got the missing peas. This is the only thing we was missing to take us to that next level. And here it is week four, we sitting at two and two and we haven't scored no more than what? 20 points. Like that's, that, that's bad. And the fact that the defense has only allowed 26 points up until this point is phenomenal. You know, to Demario Davis, to Cam Jordan, to Lattimore, to um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Taylor, I think Taylor number one, I like that cat. Uh, Paulson Debo, Tyron Matthew, all those guys. I'm saying their names just to give them the credit that they deserve. And it's couple, Pete Warner, it's a couple of guys I can't really think about at the moment. But no man, those guys deserve hell of a credit because they're being put up in a. They're they're, they're every week they're going into week to week figuring that their backs are already up against the wall because they're not going to get any type of support from the offense. So my thing is to get to this right. I didn't really put down how many times Derek Carr might have been sacked, how many times he might have been knocked down in this season within those first four games. But I'm gonna assume that it's pretty. It's been a pretty nice amount. So my thing is this. So as off as a great coach or player, but as a great coach, you always want to have plan B and C. So plan A might be the core of what you do, but you got to understand, especially when you're dealing with division rivals, they're kind of prepared to, you know, combat plan A. So now you go to plan B and if need be, you go to plan C. So when when you look at, so we got players like a lot of it, that's fast, right? Michael Thomas is not no speed receiver. He's more of a possession receiver. So Michael Thomas thing is where he's going to make his bread and butter slants, dra like drags, those little short intermediate routes. That's what he's going to make his bread and butter. And that's, and that's nothing against that. But my thing is this. If you know you got Thomas that makes his living under here, why not send Alave down that way? Because of the speed aspect of Alave, you got to take into consideration exactly where he's at on that field at all times. The dude is like a fucking roll runner. I don't want to get into because the dude's like a role runner, you know what I mean? So you got to always take in consideration to where he's at. Now that allows Michael Thomas, you know, to get involved. So, and then it's like, my thing is this too. So things that you can do when you don't really have the time for offensive, like when you don't really have the time for your quarterback really to sit back there, like long post goals, curls, all those type of routes, there's long development routes. You don't got the time for those to develop. So why not underneath stuff? Why are receiver screens? It's like, even with the run game, if we can't necessarily get the run game going, let's throw like little screen pads to try to combat the run, just to try to make some positive effort. I've seen in a lot of games that when we bring Taysom Hill in, he's been pretty successful with just doing dives up the middle. So if that's getting us four and five yards here and there, man, the two of those plays, that's the first down. I can take that. You know what I mean? Now, obviously, we don't want to just wear it out because teams going to start to adjust to it according, all way, to a certain degree, too. You always got to take into consideration when Taysom Hill is in the game. We Everybody's pretty much already expecting run, but you can't rule out the fact that he actually will throw the ball too, and he can throw the ball. So in a sense, it kind of, it, it, you kind of got to, you know, just take what is going on. So four and five yards here and there to get us down there, that's cool. And, you know, hey, if we come over the field goal, we come up with something, but we got to give our defense some type of reward for the type of work that they've been put in, you know. Um, so I ain't going to go too, too deep into this, but um, 
I like this, man. You know, like I said, yeah, it's just this is something I've been wanting to get into. People have been telling me I need to get into it for the longest. And by the way, I'm not just covering the Saints. So, like I said, this is Rob Sports Interval. So, I'm a basketball guy. I'm a football guy. I'm a boxing guy. Shout out to Canelo. I'm, a, uh, I'm, a, I'm an MMA guy. So, I, I'm a guy who's into a multitude of different things. And I, I, I'm a billiards guy. Shane Van Bonen, one of the, be the best pool shoot pool player in the world. You know, I ain't, I just never really talked to people about that because I never really met a lot of people who take it that serious. But I'm even into that. So it's a lot of different sports that I'm into. And then, hey, hey y'all may want me to start covering other sports. And that'll, allow, that'll give me the reason to get involved in those. But I'm, I'm just more familiar with football, obviously, because I played football. Basketball, I always played growing up, but I never played organized-wise. And, you know, boxing, I mean, we all... You all done that in the neighborhood, boxing and fighting or whatever the case may be. Plus, you had the game, so the games kind of got you connected to. So, but, yeah, it's not going to just be Saints, man. I'm going to be covering, like, all type of sports things, you know what I mean? Like, let me know what y'all want to come, want me to cover in the, com in the um, comments. But for sure, if you're a Saints fan, a lot of Saints. It's going to be, I might, I, I think I'm going to start doing week-to-week -week breakdowns on after we lost or after we win, my takeaways from that. And then I'm going to do predictions and things we need to, you know, prepare for going into the the, um, the following games. Like this Sunday, we got New England. Good defense, mediocre offense. But here's the thing. They got a good defense, right? So we've been struggling against some, I ain't going to say mediocre defenses, but defense that might not be as good as Belichick's defense because not a whole bunch of teams that it is that good. But yeah, so, but I'm going to do a prediction on that, man. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, do me a big, 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 big favor. Smash that thumbs up. Also, if you're new to the channel, man, go ahead and subscribe. When you subscribe, since you're not already subscribed, click the post notification bell. That way you'll be notified on all times that Rob Sports Center. I'm going to have to use saying that. Rob Sports Center. Post. See you all in the next video.